Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation entitled Stabilizing a Closed Loop DC-DC Converter Considering EMI Filter Effect. This is a continuation of this previous video, Power Electronics 47, Effect of EMI Filter on the Dynamic Response of DC-DC Converters. In this previous video, we saw how to obtain the control to output transfer function of a DC DC converter, including the effect of the EMI filter. And we also investigate how the EMI filter affects the behavior of the DC DC converters. We saw how the EMI filter can make our DC DC converter operating in closed loop and stable. So today we are going to see first an introduction and then we will present two solutions to make the operation of the DC DC converter in closed loop stable, including the EMI filter effect. So we will see a first solution, which is to redesign the compensator. And we also see another possible solution, which is to dump the EMI filter. We will study everything using an example, a back converter that we have studied in previous videos. And also we will present several LTSPICE simulations to verify the analysis. Please, if you haven't done so, remember to subscribe to this channel. Let's do first a quick review of what we have seen in previous video. We studied this converter, this back converter as an example, including the EMI filter with these values of the inductor and the capacitor. And we operated the converter in closed loop with this PI compensator and also the PWM modulator, so we do all the calculations. And then we calculated also the control to output transfer function, including the EMI filter, using the average circuit of the converter operating in continuous conduction mode. We obtain this expression for the control to output transfer function. So with this, then we calculated an EMI filter with the values that we can see here. For the capacitor, we have used this value, 10 microfarads, and for the inductance, 100 microhenries. So later, we studied the stability of the converter by plotting the loop gain of the converter without EMI filter and with EMI filter. So we can see how in red we have the loop gain, the magnitude and the phase without EMI filter. So we can see that the system is stable, but when we add the EMI filter, then we get an unstable system. We also tested this by simulation using the actual circuit here without EMI filter. We obtain a stable response in which the output voltage reaches the value of 5 volt after a given period of time. However, when we simply add the EMI filter here at the input, and run the simulation again, we get these oscillations at the output, so the system is unstable. So today we are going to see two possible solutions to make the system of the converter operating in closed loop stable again. The first possibility that we can imagine is to redesign our PI compensator so that we make our system stable again. But if we try to use this simple PI compensator that we have used before without EMI filter, this compensator has a pole in the origin and also a zero at a given frequency and then a flat response. 
So if we try to use this compensator, then we will see that it is not possible to make our system stable because we cannot decrease the gain of, or the magnitude of the loop gain in this area here because the minimum value that we can have here is the magnitude of the gain of the control to output transfer function. So we are going to get always that when we reach the phase and value of minus 180, the gain that we have, the magnitude of the loop gain, is always higher than 0 dB, so higher than 1, and the system becomes unstable. So we need to use a better compensator in order to make our system stable. So let's try to use a more sophisticated compensator, which is the PI compensator with an additional pole. In this compensator, we only have to add this capacitor here, capacitor C3, to the PI simple PI compensator, and then we will have this response for our new PI compensator with an additional pole. So we have a pole in the origin again, then we have this zero here at a given frequency, and then we have a pole at a higher frequency. And we can control also the gain of this flat part of the response. So the equation of the transfer function of this compensator is as shown here. You can get more information in this video, Power Electronics number 7, in which we talk about OPA and OTA based compensators. Usually in this compensator, we are going to have that the frequency of the pole is much higher than the frequency of the zero. We can get this by making C2, capacitance C2, much greater than capacitance C3. So with this, we can get that the frequency of the zero is given by this expression. The frequency of the pole is given also by this expression here. But if C2 is much greater than C3, we can approximate this expression to this simpler value. And also the gain in the flat part of the response is given by this expression. But again, if C2 is much greater than C3, then this is going to be approximately to this ratio of both resistances R2 and R1. So with this, we can go back to our WinPython script and then play with the different parameters of the PI compensator so that we are going to get a stable system. Here we are plotting the different transfer functions. We have the control to output transfer function, GD. Then we have the compensator in blue and we have the loop gain in green. So we have placed the zero of the compensator at this frequency, 1 kilohertz, and the pole of the compensator at 10 kilohertz. And then we change the value of the DC gain of the compensator so that we are getting a stable system. So finally, we have selected these parameters here, the frequency of the zero, 1 kilohertz, the frequency of the pole, 10 kilohertz, the gain in the flat part of the transfer function of the compensator is 0 0.07, and the value of capacitor C2 is 100 nanofarads. And then with these other equations, we can calculate the rest of the values R2, C3, and R1. So we can see finally that this is the magnitude in green of the loop gain, and this is the phase of the loop gain also in green. So we obtain a phase margin of 90 degrees, and the bandwidth that we are getting is 1 kilohertz, which is related to the dynamic response of the converter in closed loop. Here we can see the schematic of the compensator and here we have the different values of the resistances and capacitances.
And now we can do a simulation of our back converter operating in closed loop and including the EMI filter that we can see here and using the new PI compensator that we have just designed. So we have here the values that we have just calculated and we are going to do a simulation. We are going to reach steady state and then we will perform a step transient at the output by adding here in parallel another resistance at the instant equal to 10 milliseconds. So after the simulation we obtain these results. Here we have the step signal. This is the output of the compensator and this is the output voltage. So we can see how we are here at steady state with output voltage equal to 5 volts and then we have this transient and then we reach again 5 volts at the output. We can also see how the response time from the step transient is around 1 millisecond which is in accordance with the bandwidth that we have obtained for the system. However, as we can see by modifying the PI compensator, we obtain a stable system, but the time response, the dynamic response is not very fast because the bandwidth is reduced. So a better possibility is to modify the EMI filter to improve the dynamics of the converter. We can do this by adding for example, as shown here, a um, resistance in parallel with the capacitance CF. So in this way, we are damping the EMI filter so that we can get a better response. And why is this? If we consider this damped EMI filter, then we can calculate the response of the filter, the ratio of the harmonics at the input over the harmonic that are being injected by the converter using this expression here, in which we have added the effect of the resistance RF. In the previous version of the EMI filter, RF was infinite, so this factor here is zero, and then we get the equivalent response that we have seen before. So here we have a comparison of the responses when we use a very high resistance in RF, so we have an um, under damp filter, or when we use a small value for RF. So in this case, here in orange, we get this response of the magnitude and then the phase is smoother. So this can help to make the system more stable. However, the problem is that if we use this solution here with RF, what is going to happen in our converter is that RF is going to handle the DC voltage at the input. So the losses that we are going to have at this resistance are going to be very high. So this is not a practical solution that we can use to make our system stable. So a better solution is to add the damping resistor RF in series with a capacitor as shown here, capacitor CF1. So in this way, the resistance is not going to handle any DC voltage and the power is going to be much lower. But on the other hand, we want to have the resistance RF damping the LFCF filter. So we need that the impedance of capacitor CF1 at the resonant frequency of LF and CF has to be much lower than the resistance RF. So this is the way to design this filter with this condition here where omega zero is the resonant frequency of the EMI filter LFCF. 
For example, in our case, the resonant frequency is 5 kHz. If we select a value of RF equal to 1, then the value of the capacitance CF1 has to be much higher than this value, approximately 32 microfarads. So we have selected this value of 300 microfarads. So now this is the equivalent circuit that we have at the input. We obtain this response. And if we plot this response for two different values of the resistance RF, a very high value of 1 kilo ohm, so we get the under damp response of the filter, which is not what we want. And if we use the value of the resistance equal to 1 ohm, then we get a response which is over damped and with a change in the phase which is much smoother so we can get a stable operation for our converter. Now we can follow the same process that we have seen before to obtain the control to output transfer function but now including the damped EMI filter. So the only change that we have in the analysis is in the value of CF, which has this expression here now, including the values of CF1 and RF. The other impedances remain the same, and this is the same expression for the control to output transfer function in open loop. And also we have included the case without EMI filter just by making CF equal to zero. And we get this expression for the control to output transfer function in this case. So we can follow the same process in the WinPython script. Here we are plotting the open loop control to output transfer function without EMI filter with the undamped EMI filter, so is this schematic here, and also in green with the damped EMI filter, so with this schematic here for the EMI filter. And then we can see that when we use the undamped EMI filter in blue, we get this response that we have seen before, which goes very quickly to very high values of the phase. But if we use the damped EMI filter in green, then we get a response which is practically the same as the response of the converter without EMI filter, which is in red. So here we have the response in red, this is the response in green with the damped EMI filter for the magnitude and these are for the phase, so these are very close. So we can get a stable system even using the same compensator that we have used for the converter without EMI filter. We can check this by simulation. We are going to just add the capacitor in series of 300 microfarads, the resistance of 1 ohm, adding these elements into the EMI filter, and then without changing anything else, we do a simulation, and then we are going to see the results. So here we can see these results. We are here in a steady state. This is the output voltage and this is the output of the compensator. At this point, we perform the step transient on the load. So we can see how we have a change uh, in the output voltage. We have this transient and then we get the steady state operation again with 5 volts at the output and the response is only of 100 microseconds. This is because we are using the previous compensator and the bandwidth of the system in closed loop is much higher. So with this solution of adding these extra elements, we can get our system stable again and keep a faster response of the converter in closed loop. Well, this concludes this presentation today.
Please let me know if you have any comment or question. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.